तोあなたが私のマスターかはいだ、いつも、デオ。Today's topic was inevitable. I was destined to make this video. It's about fate. Fate has an ongoing joke. People outside the fandom really want to get into fate, they just don't know how. While fate may have had humble beginnings as a battle royale pornographic picture book, over the years it's exploded in popularity. Today, Fate has multiple novels, manga, spin offs, games, and a dozen anime, all with loosely connected canon. And while there's a lot of really good stuff in there, for outsiders it just looks like a tangled mess. Fate has become so broad that a lot of its fans enjoy it for very different reasons. Older fans might have come to the series because of its clash of ideals between its larger than life characters. While newer fans might appreciate the fact that there's finally something on their prison TV that appeals to them. Because of the series' loss in focus, it's become basically impossible to explain the overall appeal of fate. So, with that being said, How about I do anyway? Not the whole series. I'm cocky, but not insane. So, let's start off small with something that I think my audience will be much more familiar with. So sit back and grab yourself a drink as I explain to you why I think that you should give Fate Grand Order a try. I'm going to be honest with you up front. This review is not unbiased. I don't think it can be. But I'll try to be on my best behavior and explain both the best and the worst the game has to offer. Let's start off by putting FGO's best foot forward. And that is, without a doubt in my mind, the story and characters. Like many other gotchas, the story is separated into chapters that come out every few months. There is an overarching narrative, but the chapters tend to be rather self contained, usually consisting of you and your eggplant traveling around and beating up whatever bad guy was being particularly annoying that week. And while that might sound simple, I truly do think that the main story is really good. It starts off slow, uh, Worse than slow, the first couple chapters are kind of just bad. From pacing to cohesion to main characters, it's just not that great. It almost seems like the writers felt a little unsure about where to go with the story or were just too scared to do anything too controversial. But if you stick with it, it rather rapidly becomes a fantastic story. Not just a good story for gacha games, a good story, period. A big reason why I think FGO's story is so good is because it's allowed to kill characters. Due to some contrivances in the lore that I will not get into here, the characters can die and still be collectible within the game's canon. This has massive consequences on the limits of the narrative. Conflicts can be resolved, character arcs can be completed, villains can be defeated, stories can actually end. If all of that sounds really basic, then you have no idea just how ahead of the curve that is for not only gachas, but most live service games. See, usually in a game with no conclusive end in sight, it's difficult to complete a playable character's story. If they die or achieve their main goal, then what lore reason do they have to stick around? So, a lot of games can get stuck in these weird situations, such as Aya being constantly on the verge of death but never dying, or it taking Lucian six years to move forward with his really basic story. FGO's timey wimey grail magic sidesteps most of those problems, because as it turns out, people don't actually die when they're killed, because they were already dead to begin with. This does have the downside of stakes being lowered because death feels less impactful, but if that's the price that I have to pay in order to see one of these stories end in a gacha game, then sure, go ahead, add a grail to every single gacha. Not only is the quality of the stories usually really good, but the variety of different genres that it covers is impressive. Entire chapters have been comedies, tragedies, or even a straight up Sherlock Holmes murder mystery. There's a little bit of everything for everyone, it just might take some time to get exactly to what you find interesting. As I've already mentioned, the quality of these stories can be shaky at times, but when looked at overall, the highs more than make up for the lows. Similar to the story, FGO's characters can be a bit all over the place, probably just due to its age. 
In the nearly six years since its release, it's come up with characters that are fantastic, forgettable, and some that I wish would commit not alive. But if I had to give an overall judgement, the quality of the character designs and writing is pretty good. FGO does kinda cheat though in this regard. Again, thanks to their timey-wimey magic, alternate versions of the same character can be canon. And I'm not just talking about summer versions here. Some alts can give key insights into a character. Gilgamesh, for example, has three different collectible versions, but all from different points in his life. You can literally watch his progression from lovable, if not slightly terrifying kid, to egotistical maniac, to a much more mellowed out version of the character who is a responsible leader for his people. It's also hardest in this section to not bring up the larger fate canon. I'll admit that a big reason why I'm attached to so many characters is due to a lot of what I know about them from alternate media or even history. Returning to our friend Gilgamesh, you can see that his character remains consistent through a lot of different media. This allows for a much bigger deep dive into the character. His goals, history, personality, victories and defeats. If you account for fate at large, many of the servants aren't just PNGs to be collected, they're fully realized characters. But this is again a very dangerous double-edged sword for the reason I was talking about in the intro. Fate lore is a rabbit hole, one that is seemingly never-ending. You can often think that you're doing a simple search and then wind up on a wiki page about the Moon Grail. In addition, because Fate uses real history and mythology as a basis for a lot of its characters, the truly insane among you can spend hours or days learning a whole bunch of trivia. Such as the Norse Valkyrie Brynhildr only recognizing Sigurd and not Siegfried because Sigurd is the Nordic version of the myth. All this additional information is wonderful for someone like me, but it's also understandable that for a new player this can be extremely intimidating. And to that, I can confidently say that the main story does not require any prior knowledge. You just might end up a little bit confused during the event when they start talking about Jeanne d'Arc who is an evil lolly and thinks that she's Santa. You having fun so far? Well, cut that shit out, the fun stops here. While I don't think the other sections of FGO make it a bad game, it certainly becomes a much less good one. The gameplay of FGO is best explained as a card game where each character has its own deck. You build a team of these characters, mixing all of their decks, and then each turn you pull a total of 5 cards. Characters also have unique skills and passives that do a wide variety of things. Perhaps most importantly, each character also has a class that is effective and weak to other classes. All of this put together is really quite fun and novel at first. The system itself is quite unique and the balance between skills, decks, classes, and CEs is quite a fun one. You can easily get into situations where you're having to make on-the-fly strategies, trying to do the best with the hand that the game has dealt you. But as you progress and begin to reach the late game, most of that fun is optimized out. A good 80% of the endgame is reduced to a clicker game with some pretty animations. To explain how we get there, I need to explain Noble Phantasms. NPs are a super move that you usually build up by using a character's cards. Just like skills, these are unique to each servant and have special animations. The issue is that in the late game, building that meter becomes a joke devolving a lot of the mechanics that I explained earlier into spamming your NP to destroy whole waves of enemies in a single turn. For a lot of content, this destroys not only the challenge, but most of the on-the-fly strategy. Objection! I can hear you saying, not every game needs to be the Dark Souls of gotchas. And that's fair enough. I don't think FGO's easy difficulty was done on accident. The game literally has an I win button that's available every three real-life days. And that makes sense for a game whose main draw is the story and characters, so everything's fine. Or it would be if FGO were not an archaic old man. FGO's gameplay goes from slightly lackluster to pure hell due to some slightly weird decisions. There are a lot of features that other gotchas would consider very basic that FGO is just missing six years into its release. Fun fact for everyone who's never played this game, there is no auto battle in Fate Grand Order. Second fun fact for the day, while you can speed them up, you cannot skip those Noble Phantasm animations. After those two fun little nuggets of information, it might be time to remind you that FGO is indeed a gacha game, whose core gameplay loop includes repeating the same stages over and over again for materials to level up your characters. 
As I grinded my 200th lotto box, I slowly began to realize that the end game of Fate Grand Order is a purgatory. You manually have to repeat the same stages over and over again, except most of the new ones of the gameplay has been erased. Once you've built the team that can 3 turn clear, then all you're doing is pressing the same exact buffs in the same exact order to watch the same exact set of cutscenes hundreds of times. And before you all roast me alive in the comments, no, the gameplay isn't all that bad. Team building manages to stay interesting, and challenge quests, story bosses, and certain events can bring back that on-the-fly strategy that I miss. I think it's just a shame that that's such a small percent of the endgame. This section is going to be real quick, because I don't have mixed or complex feelings on this part of the game. Let's start off constructively. I think a very common mistake that people make when looking at how forgiving a gacha is, is focusing too much on gacha rates. There are a lot of secondary systems such as pity rates or in-game currencies that can make or break a gacha, and with all of that in mind, I can confidently say that FGO's gacha is shit. Just absolute garbage. Starting off, it has one of the lowest base rates in the industry, starting off at a solid 1%. In addition, the game also has a crippling lack of those secondary systems. Let me give an example of just how bad the secondary systems that are in the game can be by explaining USOs. Many gachas have a very similar spark system where you can build up currency from getting duplicates of high rarity characters. And in FGO's case, unregistered spirit origins can get you any single character in the game, even limited ones. Sounds pretty good. Oh no, 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 no. You misunderstood. <laughs> Getting a duplicate of a character in FGO increases the power of that character's noble phantasm up to five times. If you get a six copy or so on of the same exact five star, then you get one USO. It takes 10 USOs to get a single character. No pity system, shit rates, tons of limited characters, do not pass go, do not collect $100. Okay, let's take a step back from those negative sections and end the video with a feel-good one. The music in this game is fantastic. To be fair, the music in all of Fate is fantastic, but sticking specifically to the game, there are a lot of bangers from a lot of different genres. From Eastern-inspired bops, to a ton of electrical slaps. The music in FGO is a fine addition to anyone's collection, and I don't have much bad to say about it. You can even go back and listen to many of the tracks whenever you want to. They have this feature, but they don't have auto battle. Huh. Look, if it's not obvious by now, I love Fate. I love its world that's filled with larger-than-life characters and fascinating magic. I love its use of real myths, legends, and history. From Apocrypha to CCC. From gender-bent King Arthur to Android Attila the Hun from Mars with an orbital laser. This series is wonderful. I have a very personal connection with this franchise, so a question as simple as should you play this PNG collector has turned into what is definitely my longest video. And at the end of it all, should you try Fate Grand Order? Yes. It has a lot of highs and a lot of lows, but I think it's still worth giving a shot. Some of you will understandably bounce off of it, but I'm willing to bet that there are at least a few of you that have the same exact taste as I do. And for those people, you're in for a wild ride. So, you are my master.